Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to take a first look at the new Rokinon um, slash Samyang. This is their new 14 millimeter f2.4 from their either XP or SP series. For Samyang, it is the XP series and the rebranded Rokinon. Uh, lenses, they are the SP line. So before I look any further at this lens, just to clarify, because the question comes up basically every time, that there is no difference at all between the Samyang branded and the Rokinon branded lenses. They are the exact same lens. In fact, you'll find things, for example, on the barrel down here where it says technology by Samyang Optics. The bag that comes along with it, it's a padded case, you know, kind of carry bag, like a Canon L series type bag. It says Samyang right on it. And so optically, physically, the lenses are identical. But in different markets, for whatever reason, this Korean manufacturer, it sells the lenses under a couple of different brands. And so, just so you know, if you're shopping either the Samyang or the Rokinon version, there's no difference at all between the two of them. And so, going a little bit further than that, I've been looking forward to taking a look at this lens. I uh, really, really liked, in a lot of ways, their new 85mm uh, lens, which is the other lens that was released in this new Premium Series line. Uh, I did own the 14mm Rokinon lens um, for two and a half, three years. And after I reviewed it uh, four or five years ago, I really, really liked a lot of things about it, uh, enough so that I was willing to put up with its quirks. And it does have a number of quirks, that original lens. Um, it has no electronics in it, and now they do sell an, an a, or a version with an AE chip. Um, and so that certainly is a step in the right direction. But there were some other pretty significant issues. It had a very serious um, mustache um, shaped distortion pattern, which made it a little bit harder if you're wanting to do architectural type work. It vignetted very heavily at f2.8, and so uh, that would impact your images even if you were shooting at night, shooting astrophotography. But of course, it had very low coma and a very wide angle of view, and it was inexpensive, and so it's quite an attractive budget option for those that are wanting to do astrophotography but don't want to pony up for the much more expensive lenses. And so I was excited to see this, this new kind of premium replacement because while I haven't yet tested the Como performance myself, uh, a few others have and found that if anything, it's even better. And I certainly can attest for the fact that while it's not vignette free, I've started doing some shooting with it, uh, the vignette is less extreme, even with the wider maximum aperture as the other lens. Of course, that wider maximum aperture of f2.4, which, by the way, if you've got it mounted on a Canon body, which I do here, note that although it has a maximum aperture of f2.4, because of the way that the aperture report reports back on the body, wide open, you will actually get an aperture reportage of f2.5 rather than f2.4. And so uh, don't be off put by that. Know that that's just the way that things report back, but the maximum aperture is f2.4, which means of course that it lets in a, a pretty fair amount of extra light compared to the f2.8 version. Now, uh, there's some other things that have changed. The other lens, of course, which is more of a budget lens, it had a, a plastic body. This is now a, an aluminum alloy or an aluminum alloy body, beautifully built. And again, as I said on the 85 millimeter lens, it feels and looks a lot, handles a lot like a, a Zeiss lens. And uh, continuing in that, uh, that kind of vein, much like a Zeiss lens, it has the, the full, and, and I understand that they've been producing some AE chipped type versions of these lenses, but note that this is, this is different and that this is a full electromagnetic um, controlled aperture. And, and as such, there is no manual aperture ring on this lens but everything is controlled internally, um, just like any auto-focusing lens, at least as far as the aperture selection goes, and thus all of the metering modes are identical to any other lens. 
There is also with that full suite of electronics, it means that it communicates EXIF data, and it means that there is a focus confirmation chip that is built into it. And so all of that, of course, is very good. It makes it a far more useful lens out in the real world. And, and while I love the images that could be produced with the older Rokinon 14mm, which when I say older, it's still going to continue to be sold to my knowledge, and it is at a completely different price point from this lens. The um, older version is, uh, it, it, right now it's $399, although I think there's a sale going on. And so let's just say under $500 is what you're able to get it for. This new lens coming to market is twice that. And so it is uh, $999 in the U.S. market. And so it's twice as expensive. But it, it also um, it has a whole lot going for it. So beyond that build quality, that extends to a very nice manual focus ring. I, you know, as I said, I put up with the quirks of the other lens because the images it produced. But truth be told, in a lot of ways, it wasn't very fun to use in the field. It did have a number of, of quirks that just made it a bit of a challenge to use. And so expect this new lens to be a much friendlier experience. The one thing, of course, this is a manual focus only lens, and um, uh, and so that that's really off putting to some people. I think, oh, I just I, I can't manually focus. But do note that a lens like this, there really isn't a whole lot of focus involved unless you happen to be focusing down very closely on a subject nearby, and it will focus down to only 11 inches or 28 centimeters. And so it will focus down quite closely. And if you're at very close focus distances, you're going to need to you know, actually invest in focus, um, either through live view focus or using the focus confirmation chip, something like that. But under most situations, you probably won't have to worry about focusing this lens at all. With a 14 millimeter um, uh, focal length on a full frame body, that is, uh, that's taking in a field of view of over a hundred and 14 degrees, which by the way, that's actually a little bit less than the the more inexpensive lens. Um, I, it, it, it was actually wider um, in, it, in its true uh, angle of view. It was, it was actually wider than 14 millimeters, whereas this is closer to an actual uh, 14 millimeters and it so it frames as 114.12 degrees. But anyway, with such a massive, massive angle of view in the frame, uh, it's very easy to focus just a, a f you know five or six feet out and to have everything in focus, even at, at fairly wide apertures. And so it's actually very easy to use out in the field. There's not really a whole lot of focusing involved. And if I'm out shooting with a lens like this, often I'll just kind of have my focus preset to where I'm going to be shooting at, and I'll just shoot unless there's, as I said, unless I get really close to something and I'm doing a perspective shot, I will just go ahead and, and just go out and not worry about it and shoot. And so in, in terms of the overall handling of the lens, this is going to be a very easy lens to handle. Now the focus ring, it has a rubberized texture, much like Zeiss's newer lenses, and uh, overall it has quite a long focus throw. In fact, it has a longer focus throw than what Zeiss's typical wide-angle lenses do. And, and so uh, just to give you a quick estimation of that, that here if we're starting at minimum focus, we are going all the way to about there to uh, go to infinity. And there's nice, of course, firm, hard stops at either extreme. And, uh, and so that is, that's nice. Mechanically, there is a little bit, a little bit heavier damping than what I would like. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's easy to use and it moves along very smoothly, but the, uh, the damping weight is a little bit heavier than what I would like. And it was a little bit heavier than what it was on the 85 millimeter. So just to look at a few of the other specs, while this is a larger lens, of course, than the one that it replaces, it's larger in the sense of being heavier. It's not really all that much larger overall. And so this new lens is 3.74 inches um, around. That's 95 millimeters. Um, compared to the older lens, it was 3.43 inches or 87 millimeters around. And it is 4.3 inches long. That's 109.4 millimeters compared to 96.1 millimeters or 3.78 inches 
of the, the lens uh, before. And so it is a physically larger lens, but not a whole lot larger. And even with the weight, the old version it was 550 grams or 1.21 pounds. This new version is 791 grams or 1.74 pounds. And so part of that, of course, comes from the metal construction. And of course, it has a larger maximum aperture, which means that it has more glass in there. And uh, on that note, it is a much more optically complex lens than the one that it replaces. The one, the, you know, the kind of the standard line 14 millimeter lens um, is 14 elements in 10 groups. This new lens is a much more complex 18 elements in 14 groups. And so I suspect that some of the things that they have really tried to work to correct are, of course, distortion. And, and I've used this, this lens quite a bit already for some you know, higher end architectural work. Um, that I was testing it on, and it um, it actually does quite well. It is not distortion free, but it uh, it has a minor amount of distortion that is much easier to correct than the old lens. And uh, the distortion is low enough that I was able to do you know panorama type shots and much more easily join them together. Here's an example that shows you just how beautiful this is. Just a couple of frames stitched together, and of course a really massive angle of view there. Another big improvement is when it comes to the actual overall aperture. It's not just that it's electronically controlled, but the old lens, one of the things that I dislike the most about it optically is it had six aperture blades that produced to me a rather boring sun star or sunburst when you stop the lens down. I find that that little thing adds a lot to an image. The new lens has nine aperture blades, and so as a result, it's going to have much more attractive sun stars, and at the same time, of course, it also will be have a more rounded aperture when it is stopped down. So all of that, of course, is a good thing. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to investing more time in this lens. I've actually shot with it a fair bit already because I've got so much gear right now, I haven't had a chance to report on it. But I think uh, this is going to be quite an impressive option for those that are looking for something either for, uh, for shooting landscapes, for shooting astrophotography. And now I would say it's going to be a reasonable lens to use even if you're wanting to shoot um, interiors. And of course, having a wider maximum aperture than any other current 14 millimeter lens, and I say current because Sigma has announced it's still several months out, but Sigma has announced a 14 millimeter f1.8 lens, of course, and that's going to quickly take over that crown of being the largest maximum aperture. But overall, this is an intriguing lens, and if you'll look in my description down below, I've got an image gallery going, and, uh, and you'll see a lot of new images being added there on an ongoing basis, and hopefully soon I'm going to get the right kind of weather um, where I can go out and shoot some astrophotography with it and really kind of uh, emphasize what I expect to be what will be one of the great strengths of this lens. You can also in that description find a linkage to follow me on social media or sign up for my newsletter. And of course, if you haven't already clicked that subscribe button, please do so. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.